Hi guys, we are gonna do the two dart bodice today. So basically we will take our one dart bodice front, has one dart here at the waist, and we're gonna take it into two darts as they show in my book on page 85. Um, we're gonna just follow along with these steps. So I've got all my materials that I'm gonna need ready, hopefully ready to go, and let's begin. So I will trace my bodice front as it is, and this will be my worksheet. So I'm using my harder cardboard block that I can trace against, making to get making sure to get oops all those notches and everything in the right place and then also my bust point okay went a little crazy there i'll erase that now <laughs> so it doesn't get in my way okay and so what I can go ahead and do is I've got my bust point and I've got my two notches down here. Oops. So I can just go ahead and draw those dart legs from the bust point. I'll try not to knock my camera over again. There we go. So those are our dart legs. And the first thing we're going to do is just draw a line, basically uh, straight across to where we're going to put another dart over here. It just gives you some different options for the way that you can fit a bodice. So you don't have to have this really large dart only in one big spot. You can actually have a small dart and a small dart in a, many different places. So it just gives you a lot more options for when you're designing. Um, so I am going to draw a line from the bust point just straight across. So I want to make sure I'm going straight across. I can actually line up my ruler with this line, which I know is a straight line, the center front line, and then I can slide it down to my best point, and then I can just draw right off of that. So there we go. Now I have a line going straight across from the bust point into the side seam here, okay? And this, just so that it makes things like not so confusing, um, the book tells you to label, so we can, we can go ahead and do that. It says to label this side, this um, dart leg A, this dart leg B, and the side waist will label it X. So we'll just go ahead and do that so that we're kinda <laughs> not getting confused and following along. And then, we're gonna go ahead and draw a square line on our paper. So again, what we can do is come off of this straight line as a square line. So just like I did before, I'm gonna line up my ruler here, see-through, coming off of this center front line, really nice and straight. And then I'm gonna draw a line it goes all the way across the paper. There we go. So what happens now is this to this. This is a perfect um, 90 degree angle, okay? This is a square line. This is now a perfect square, you know? That's what that is. <laughs> so this is a square angle, okay? And then what I can do is slice open my darts uh, my dart leg and my new slash lines so that I can move this around. So let's slice open right here on my B. And I'm gonna go almost to that point, but not all the way. And I'm gonna slice open here on my new slash line that I drew to the side seam. Almost all the way. So now this piece kind of pivots. So what they say is to pivot this guy down and see again, and I'll kind of highlight here, this 
here, this line that my X is sitting on, that's the bottom of my pattern piece, right? Remember, this is my square line that I just drew. So what I want to do is pivot this down until it hits my square line. So I just pull that down and it actually doesn't need to go far at all. See if I go too far and I can see this, um, I don't know if you can see through my paper, you'll probably be able to see through yours. Like there I went too far and I want to get it just right. So now see how this angle, it's all beautifully square. This is a nice straight line and I can test it by again putting my ruler here and see how this goes along with that straight line and there's my X meeting right there at that beautiful straight line. So what this ultimately does is see how this makes now a little dart here and a little dart here. And so now we've got two instead of one really large one. So what I can do is tape this in place and then I can recut out the shape and retrace this. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start over here on my center front. And again, if I'm tracing this, I'm going to cut my line away. So I'm cutting on the inside of my drawn pencil line. That way I'm not adding anything at all, even a tiny amount to my overall size. That's super important for precision. Sometimes the little changes we make in a pattern are so tiny, they're just like a sixteenth of an inch, it's barely anything, but it does make all the difference when you're talking about bulk in fabric and whether or not it's going to fit somebody. Okay, so coming right along. getting rid of this excess. And so here on the bottom, I can now cut this across pretty straight and I can ignore that previous line that I had for the dart. And what we'll do is we'll remake that when we do our new one. And then, let's see, I'll go ahead I don't want to lose maybe this original shape. It looks like I may want to kind of leave that. So this, if you can see where my A, it's actually a little bit lower than that square line. So even though it's really small, <laughs> I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to hold on to that shape and not lose it. There we go. And then I'll cut the inside of my dart away. So to trace this, let me go ahead and I'm going to put tape up here since I'm about to cut this away, which will totally move everything, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to see if I can mark it just by putting some tape up here for now. all of this. I'm going to leave that so that tape basically holds my exact shapes, if you see what I did. So I didn't lose that tiny shape down there. See, that's my square line, but I actually went with the original shape because that's supposed to be there. And I'm keeping these distances that we created, okay? So now I'll retrace this. So bring it over here. Let me see if I can retrace this nicely without needing to get out a ruler and hold any of it down. I can do my dart leg, but I might need to redo that anyway, but I'll just go ahead and do it now. I'll sh you'll see as we go.
And if you need, you can put a weight on top of your paper while you're transferring. You could like stick your phone, <laughs> maybe something like that on top of it so it doesn't move. Maybe I'll try that actually, since it ends up moving ever so slightly, whether you like it or not. Don't forget to put that little notch in there and then I'll go ahead and just make sure I draw and mark out. You can either draw the legs now or you can give yourself notches. And then this, which I've got here kind of taped up, so I'll move that tape now, is really important because this is my bust point that I definitely want to transfer. And again, what I usually do is just make sure I've gone through the paper so I can make a little hole. So I've got my bust point. Okay, so worksheet aside, now you can roughly see that I've traced this thing, okay? So we still need to kind of change up these darts a little bit because right now both of these darts are going to the actual bust point. And remember, we want to drop it a little bit from the bust so that our darts aren't pointing to your apex or pointing to your nipples. It's just not flattering. So this one we drop like we sort of normally do. We'll drop that a quarter of an inch in this case. And the book gives us different dimensions, uh, different amounts to drop, but that's because it's using a full scale and we're using this half scale. So I'm gonna basically kind of alter it and change it up a bit. So I say let's drop this a quarter of an inch down. So again, just to get that, I'm gonna draw really lightly, finish my dart legs from the bust point, and then I can really easily make sure I'm dead center and I've dropped a quarter of an inch and I've drawn a new dot, <laughs> a new, this is now my dart point. And then I can draw this new line that becomes the real one. All right, and that other guy can get erased ultimately. And then with this side dart, we really don't want that pointing as much either. That's kind of strange to have this side, sideways arrow pointing to your bust, right at your bust. So this one we drop back even more, um, basically like double the amount. So this one, let's just go straight across. And actually first, just to make it easy so you can see too, I'm gonna just finish drawing that full dart leg but really lightly because I know I'm going to erase it. So I'll try to draw really lightly. There we go. So let's drop this one a half inch, okay? Double the amount. There we go. So this new point is here. And now I'll redraw the dart legs from that point. Okay, and I can erase all of this, right? So you can really see now the big difference. We've really come away from that apex, right? So we can pull this all the way down. There we go. And pull that back and erase this. There we go. And now we've got our new shape. And then we want to add seam allowance and we want to get the shape of these folds. And so this one on the side is going to bend down towards the waist. So we can fold one of those. And what we want is all that excess to go this way. So I'm folding the bottom one and I'm kind of bringing it up to meet the top. Okay, and you already start to see I've got a little bit of round shape. You know, you can imagine the bust would fit in there. And I'll take my tracing wheel and just trace right there. 
and now I can see that this will come out. Okay, so I can draw that in. And again, if these get really, your pages get really wrinkly and awful, you can iron them. Usually a, a dry iron works great to get your paper flat again. Okay, so there we go, I have that shape. And then remember this one's gonna point towards the center. So again, I'll hold this one and bring it over to meet the other. I feel like I'm just annihilating this paper. Okay, and I'm bringing this over, trying to get it to line up just right, and then I'll trace. There we go. And I can see that this one also pokes out. And I'll draw it. There we go. Whew. Very wrinkly paper. <laughs> you can retrace this again now if you want it, or you can just add seam allowance and try to press it out flat, maybe like I said, with a dry iron. Um, so we'll go ahead and if we want to say that the center front is still just cut on fold, we'll come over maybe just a half inch. You really wanna keep it pretty close to that edge when you're doing this um, cut on fold grain line. That way you can point right to the fold that you're talking about. So we'll say cut one on fold and we'll do the arrow so we know that's the grain line. And we don't need to add seam allowance there but we do need to add seam allowance everywhere else. And so again, we'll just come right off of all these lines and add our quarter of an inch. all the way, something like that. And I'll just show you now while I'm down here that I'll always make sure to extend these dart legs all the way into the seam allowance. And then remember they get a cross T drawn within the seam allowance because that would be where you would come if this was fabric and you would clip right there so that you knew where your dart was. And then again, we'll come on this side and add all the seam allowance, quarter inch, all the way. It's really easy on these straight parts. And our dart legs come all the way here. And again, here's our notches right there. Um, we wanna make sure we square all these corners just so that it is very clear. This is our seam line, right? So we'll extend that all the way. This is our seam line and it's different from uh, the edge of the fabric that becomes our seam allowance, okay? So nice, pretty squares where it's like this here is where the fabric stops um, as far as what we end up seeing on the final garment. Sometimes it's super helpful when you've got that to refer back to. There we go, and I'll square off that edge. Looks really nice. Just to make sure, I'll make sure my line goes all the way across. Um, and then I'll continue going all the way around. Notice how I lightly turn the ruler here, but I'm still accurately getting my exact quarter of an inch just by light little turns, a lot of small marks. And being especially careful on those corners and this is also why I use a mechanical pencil or a very super sharp pencil to make sure that I can really get those good tiny details um, as opposed to like a big fat pencil that needs sharpening and 
Makes your line much bigger than you need it to be. And again, look at that nice sharp corner, really clear. We'll do the same thing here. Squared corners. Just looks really nice. Okay, and here's my last bit, is adding seam allowance to the neckline. Just a little round. So I'm just making tiny little marks. And I'm connecting the dots basically. And then I'll come back in and make sure that center front line is perfect. Oh yeah, and then look, one more corner I need to square. Just check all your corners always, because that's always going to be a place where I take points off. There we go. And I can clean up these outside edges. Or if you want, you could just cut it out and then you won't have to erase. You could sort of cut it out and put it on another piece of paper. Something like that. So you don't have to worry about this. And it's why I am very messy usually when I'm making patterns because typically if you were about to sew, you would always be cutting it out and I know that so I can't unknow that. <laughs> so here is my two dart bodice. So I'll label it as such. Two dart bodice. And I'll give it my name. Oh, and look, I forgot to continue that notch over there. And here's where I kind of, yeah, just look at everything, make sure I've got everything that I intended. I've transferred everything over. There we go. So I've got that notch that was originally there. Whoops, I've got all my squared corners. I've got label, grain line. I've got my darts. There we go. And the last thing I would probably do, you know, is iron it <laughs> to get it really nice and flat. But that's your two dart bodice.